Principles of Quantity Food Production Quantity food preparation refers to the production of larger than normal volumes of food for a large group of people. In addition to catering events, it is often used in healthcare and residential living facilities to take care or cater to clients. Organizing food storage. As much as you can, keep food storage in all one part of your kitchen. If you don't have a pantry, group the cupboards you are going to use for food storage together. These cupboards should be hanging cabinets, not floor cupboards, which are easy targets for cre creepy, crawly, unwelcome guests. If you are going to have some food storage below, make it canned or bottled goods. Do not store food under the sink. Here are some basic categories that can help you decide how to organize a kitchen for storage, making it easy to find items when you need them. So these are the baking supplies, dry grains, beans, and pasta, snacks, spices and herbs, canned goods, bottled goods, drinks, refrigerated items, and alcohol. In organizing kitchen equipment, kitchen appliances, plates, glasses, knives, etc. These items should be stored in cupboards and drawers that are separate from your food storage. Although they can certainly be made attractive, shelves are not an ideal solution for how to organize a kitchen. Objects exposed to the air will quickly accumulate a layer of dusty grime in a kitchen and will cry frequent cleaning to look sharp. So as much as possible, everything should be in a closed cupboard. If you don't have enough cupboards store to store both equipment and food, use your cupboards for st food storage and arrange your equipment on shelves and hang some items on the walls. Food storage gets priority because nothing makes a kitchen look messy faster than having packages of food lying about. To store your kitchen equipment, once again, you want to group like objects together. Store heavier and less used objects in lower cabinets and lighter, more frequently used objects at eye level. If you have high out of reach cabinets, be sure to only store things you, you use occasionally in this. Here are some basic categories of objects that should be grouped together to get you started. So these are the flatware, tableware, glasses, plates, and balls, etc. Servingware, utensils and gadgets, cookingware or cookware, pots, skillets, etc bakeware, measuring utensils, cutlery, small appliances, kitchen linens, and paper products. So how to organize a kitchen cleaning center? So number one, keep whatever items you use when cleaning dishes, sponges, scrubbers, brushes, dishwashing liquid, scoring powder, in a caddy that can be quickly put away out of sight when you are done cleaning. Have a place to dish towels near your cleaning area. A rack is better than a hook as towels might not dry well if on a hook, especially if they are under the sink. If you decide to keep cleaning supplies under your sink, don't forget to childproof this area if that is an issue. Kitchen counters. One of the keys to show how to organize a kitchen is to not allow the counter to become the drop zone for random objects, most of which should live in a designated home of their own. Get all family members to cooperate in the effort to keep the counter clutter-free. Only the appliances you use every day have a place on the kitchen counter. Everything else belongs in a cupboard. One or two decorative objects may be a bowl of fruit and a vase of flowers, and a picture is complete. Once you have your kitchen organized, keep it that way by always putting objects away when you are done using them. 
you will be amazed at how clean and harmonious your kitchen will feel if you just put everything away where it belongs. Cooking methods. Grilling. Grilling is a method of cooking food over direct heat. The food is exposed to the flames and the heat comes from the coals underneath the grate. You can grill over an open flame or in a grill pan. Grill grates are used and the food that is grilled usually has charred lines on it. Steaming For steaming, food is placed in a steamer, which is kept over hot liquid. The steam cooks the food, but the water or liquid being used for steaming does not come into contact with the food itself. Searing Searing refers to browning of food. Seared food has a brown and caramelized appearance from the outside. Food can be seared when small amounts of fat are used over high heat to give the outside a caramelized appearance. While the inside is not cooked through, searing fish or meat is quite common. Next is boiling. When food that is cooked in water reaches 100 degrees Celsius, it is in the boiling stage. In this method, the food is completely immersed in water and boiled until soft and tender. Sautéing To sauté food is one of the most common steps that we follow while cooking anything. Food is cooked in a very little oil or fat until it turns tender. This is usually done in a pan and the food is cooked over medium to high heat. Poaching In order to poach food, it needs to be submerged in water that is between 71 degrees Celsius and 82 degrees Celsius. The food remains in the water until it completely or it, it is completely cooked. Broiling Broiling requires the source of heat to come from the top and mostly ovens are used to broil. The setting can be adjusted to broil so that the top heat source is the only one that comes on. However, while broiling, one must keep an eye on the food as it cooks very fast. Baking Baking is simply or simply means cooking food items usually uncovered in an oven using dry heat. This method of cooking is used for foods like bread, cakes, cookies, muffins, and lasagna. Roasting this method is similar to baking as it involves the use of an oven to cook the food. Mostly meats or vegetables are roasted. Food is cooked until it turns beautiful golden brown. Blanching Blanching and boiling are almost the same, but in blanching the food is par cooked. Then it is submerged in an ice bath to stop the cooking process. Stewing Stewing is similar to braising. The ingredients are first seared, then cooked in liquid. Deep frying Deep frying means cooking the food in hot oil or fat. The food is cooked until it, its color turns to golden. It is crispy on the outside and the inside is cooked completely. Braising. Similar to searing, the ingredients are seared, then cooked in water. Foods that are usually braised are high in protein like pot roasts. Shallow frying. Shallow frying, here the oil only reaches up to about half an inch up the pan and food is cooked on one side first before being 
turned over to the other side so it can be completely cooked. Barbecue Barbecuing requires food like meats and briskets to be cooked for long and slowly over a spit that is fueled with the smoke produced from either coal or wood. Packaging and food preservation. Food is an ideal medium for the growth of microorganisms. Therefore, by inhibiting the development of these, we can increase the shelf life of food. There are many causes that negatively influence the quality of food, either by intrinsic factors of food or such as its nutrient content, water availability, pH, etc., or by extrinsic factors such as temperature of storage, relative humidity, exposure to sunlight and air, handling and processing of raw materials. The main objective of food preservation is to maintain a product in a perfect hygienic conditions and to protect its rheological and organoleptic qualities. This process of food preservation allow us to obtain safe products of high quality at a reasonable price. The permanent increase in the demands of consumers in terms of quality and prolongation of the useful life of the food causes continuous changes in the way in which the food is produced, distributed, stored, and sold. The food industry is constantly researching for new methods that are less aggressive with food, with lower energy consumption and more effective effective against pathogenic microorganisms. Packing. Packaging is a conservation method that protects food from light, moisture, and other environmental contaminants. For a correct packaging process, the following factors must be taken into account. Number one is storage. Capacity to be stacked and transported, control of quantity produced, conservation of small products. Number two is protection against deterioration, leakage, and breakage, dehydration, contamination, theft, and alteration, physical protection against shock, vibration, compression, temperature, and etc. Barrier protection against oxygen, water, vapor, dust, bacteria, and etc. So, number three is information. This is the identification of the product, description of use or preparation, Warning about risks derived from improper use. List of ingredients, nutritional data, and price. Promotion. Marketing tool to differentiate a product from similar ones and attract attention in shops and supermarkets using, for example, brands, colors, illustrations, and forms. Transport. Greater ease and safety to move products from the manufacturer to the warehouse and the vendors tertiary containers, and even a consumer primary packaging. So that would be all for these topics. Now for your references, you may go to these websites and review the lesson. So thank you so much everyone for listening. I hope you learned something today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.